So these are six subtle forms of work salvation. You know, doing your part. Uh, you know, giving your life to Jesus, committing your life to Jesus, um, making Jesus the Lord of your life. Uh, you know, being able to lose your salvation is a subtle form of work salvation. You know, having a genuine faith, and what do they mean by that? To have works and not just faith. And turning from your sins or repenting from your sins is work salvation. Um, if, you, if you have to do any of these to be saved, it is preaching heresy. It's heresy. And you might be thinking, you might be thinking, well, Victor, you know, you're just splitting hairs. You know, you're just make, making a mountain out of a molehill. You're just straining at a gnat. Um, you know, because these preachers that, that say these things, they don't really mean that. That's not what they mean. They're just saying that, but that's not what they mean. You know, you don't have to make a big deal out of it and, and separate over it. And, you know, sometimes when you're in the minority and you believe something that the Bible says and it just seems like nobody else is believing this, Sometimes you start to think that yourself, don't you? You start to think like, you know, am I, am I wrong? Am I, am I making a big deal out of something that is not a big deal? But, you know, then, then you read the Bible. And then you realize, maybe I'm not making a big enough deal of it because God makes it a big deal. Look at what it says in Galatians 1 verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And that's what work salvation is. It's another gospel. That's what all these six forms of these subtle work salvation in order to be saved, they are another gospel. They are not the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, which is what the Bible teaches. They're preaching another gospel, which is not another. So it's not, it isn't another gospel because it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. There's that subtlety that subtle form of work salvation, it's coming across as believing on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's subtly perverting the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Now, does this passage allow for us to have an attitude of, oh yeah, well, they're just preaching a false gospel. They're just preaching work salvation. But they don't, they don't mean it. They're, they're still our friends. They're still our buddies. They're still on the same team. Because sometimes we think that. But what is this verse saying? This verse is saying that if they preach another gospel, let them be accursed. Let them be accursed. Let them go to hell. Look at what it says here in verse 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you. You know, maybe Muhammad or Joseph Smith should have read their Bible before listening to that satanic spirit pretending to be the angel Gabriel or pretending to be the angel Moroni because even angels from heaven can preach another gospel um, but look here, it says here, but though we, but though we, what, what is Paul saying? He says, even if I come to you preaching another gospel, don't believe it. Believe what the Bible says. That, that's a pretty strong statement because he's saying, if any, because he says later on, if any man preach unto you another gospel, which he have not received, let him be accursed, because that's somebody else. But he includes here in verse 8, but though we or an angel from heaven, even if an, a, a true apostle of Jesus Christ, even if one of the 12 came to you preaching another gospel, Paul is saying here, let him be accursed. And what does that mean to us? You know, even if your favorite preacher, even if your favorite independent, fundamental Baptist preacher comes to you preaching another gospel, the Bible says here, let him be accursed. Um, because we don't put men above, you know, what the Word of God says and what the truth is. And, you know, people will say, you know, oh, but that, how can that preacher be preaching a work salvation? I mean, he's helping so many people. You know, look how big his church is. Oh, he's such a lovely guy. But if he's preaching work salvation, what does the Bible say? I mean, I didn't write this. And to me, I mean, this seems pretty harsh, right? To me, in, in the flesh, when I read that and say, well, if they're preaching work salvation, 
let them be accursed. And he says it twice because he's emphasizing how serious this topic is. Now, am I saying, am I saying that if somebody is saved and they preach a work salvation, are they going to hell? No, because once you're saved, you cannot go to hell. But people will say, you know, it's, it's just semantics. You know, they're, they're just saying that, but they don't really mean it. But then if they don't really mean it, then stop saying it. You know, if you don't mean for people to turn from their sins to be saved, then stop telling people to turn or repent of their sins to be saved. If that's not what you believe, then stop saying it. You know, we don't need a bunch of preachers in the pulpits of Australia today not being clear about salvation. I mean, if they can't preach salvation clearly, what are they doing in the pulpit? If they can't teach people what believing on the Lord Jesus Christ means and that it's not by works and they're using phrases that imply works, then they should not be in the pulpit. Get somebody else to preach in their place. You know, I, you know, I do understand. You know, I, I, I do understand you know, that there are preachers out there and even preachers we know who say these things. Um, you know, that, that are not intentionally trying to preach a work salvation. You know, there are preachers out there that are intentionally trying to preach work salvation and they are evil people. But, you know, unfortunately there are preachers out there that unintentionally preach um, work salvation. And I'm not saying that those people are not saved. I'm not saying that those people will be accursed if they preach work salvation. But you know what? And I prayed that this morning. That, you know, if there are good men preaching work salvation, that number one, that they would be corrected either by God or by a brother in Christ. Or, you know, that they would stand up, if they do believe it, that they would stand up for the truth amongst their peers and not care what the fallout is. If their best buddy or their inner circle is preaching repent of your sins or preaching work salvation, I pray that the preachers that do have the right position would stand up for the truth of God's word, even in, in the midst of persecution from their innermost peers. You know, otherwise I pray that God would remove them from the ministry. I pray that God would somehow, you know, destroy their ministry, take them out any way he can before they do more damage. Because let me ask you this, you know, if you're not, you know, if you're not going to split hairs over salvation, like if salvation is not going to be an issue where we really get down to the nitty gritty and split hairs over, then what are we going to split hairs over? You know, amongst Baptist churches these days, you know, they split hairs over, you know, whether or not to call yourself a Baptist or not. You know, you don't call yourself a Baptist, we're going to separate from you. You know, you don't wear a tie and a suit, oh, we're going to separate from you. You don't sing the hymns, we're going to separate from you. Oh, you allow pants on women, we're separating from you. Um, you, you don't use instruments in your church, oh, we're going to separate from you. You don't do door knocking, you, 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 you only do street evangelism or you only do this form of evangelism? Oh, we're going to separate you. But preacher work salvation? Oh, they don't really mean that. You know, they don't, you know, they're, you know they're, they're saying that you have to turn from your sins and every member in their church believes you have to turn from your sins. Every member in their church believes that if they commit some big sin, they're going to lose their salvation. Oh, but that's okay. You know, we're still buddies. We're still going to work with them. They're still our friend. No, if you preach work salvation... You're not my friend. You're not on the same team as me because you are sending people to hell by teaching them that they have to, to do works and this is what our church is against. This is the reason why we go out and preach the gospel because everyone is believing in works and you're just adding to that problem if you preach that you have to keep the commandments to be saved by any of these six forms. You know, so salvation, you know, it's a very serious issue, isn't it? Because it's not just a matter of of physical life and death because it's a matter it's a matter of eternal life and death and that's why it's very serious and that's why we see this warning in the bible that if anybody preaches another gospel let him be accursed